Hey everybody, how you doing? Today we are going to be talking about pickleballs. Yeah, that's right. This is a subject that is kind of big in the news right now with the PPA starting out with a new ball this year. So that door fast is out and in with the Vulcan Pro Pro Flight. And that's going on right now as I speak. We'll also talk about indoor and outdoor pickleballs, what the difference is, and maybe a myth about how they're actually supposed to be used. And also an interview with the designer of the Ernie Pickleball Machine from Victory Sports Technologies, Dave, and let's just go ahead and jump right into it. <laughs> Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Rusty Nelson and welcome and welcome to my channel here. And mostly what this channel is about is it's actually about the villages and it always has been about different things going on in the villages and actually retiring and I'm basically being retired. Well, one of those things that became a big part of my retirement was pickleball and I decided this year that I was going to really get into it and I thought, well, I originally had this channel to do things about the villages, and I'm still going to every Sunday do that, have a video come out about the villages in retirement. But I thought during the week it'd be fun to do a video on pickleball. And right now I am about a 3.8, 3.9, somewhere around there. I kind of play in local tournaments, goofing around once in a while, but I decided to kind of take the sport a little more seriously as a sport rather than just a social event in, in my life. And I thought, well, I'll go ahead and I will start doing some videos. And last week I did one on the Ernie pickleball machine, and I'll throw a picture of that up here. And I did an interview with Dave, who was the designer, which turned out to be a really interesting interview uh, about the machine because I was thinking about buying one. And while I was up there, which he's watching the video, wherever that link is, um, I, I, I decided to buy one and I took one home with me and I'm going to do an unboxing of that. Also, I got a discount code. So right there's the code if you want to use that. You're more than welcome to uh, right now. But the other thing that I kind of I realized was is as I started playing more and more, how much of a difference there is in the balls themselves. And I really didn't understand exactly what the difference is. So while I learned about it, I figured I'd pass along that information to you. And that's something that you can learn. Now, most of the stuff for this channel is going to not be video for the 5.0 players, although there'll probably be, oh, maybe I'll get up there someday. I don't know. Um, but a lot of it is for people that are slowly starting to learn kind of where I am that, Getting above the 4.0, 4.5, and moving up there, there'll be some things. So I'm going to do different things about pickleball. I'm going to be taking a trip next month out to Daytona for four or five days to play some pickleball at Daytona or Pictona, what it's called. So I'll do a little video on that. And also, um, I, I, I plan on getting a coach since I got this pickleball machine to kind of help me out and see whether it's actually going to help me get above that 4.0 and working with coaches get above that 4.0 and i'll try to get all that on video but for now today we're going to be talking about pickleballs and kind of like a lot of the stuff that i've learned about pickleballs now first off there is something new in the ppa world that is a big change for those guys and i just got done watching some of the masters the ppa masters on youtube you can go ahead and stream that if you want it's kind of cool but i i'll tell you what i started they're playing with a new ball called a vulcan v pro flight now i went to go order one and unless i ordered a hundred of them they're all sold out i'm sure everybody's trying to get one and we'll talk about the differences in that a little bit but i did notice or i thought i did um the the folks on there playing struggling a little bit with the ball and uh, the commentators were talking about people giving color and stuff like that, that they felt the ball was a little bit harder and a little slightly heavier. And to me, it looked like that ball was coming off there a little hotter. I saw a bunch of balls going out that some of these guys like Ben Johns and Anna Lee and Degawar and stuff like that, they, they don't hit that many balls out, but this time they were hitting some of those balls out. So I'll have some more information on that. A little bit later, but to bring it down to earth, we're going to talk about some of the basics of these different kinds of balls 
And when you really should be using, in my experience, an indoor ball or an outdoor ball, we'll talk about how they're made. So let's get started on pickleballs. Before we really get into this, we probably need to take a look at the rules so you know where the boundaries are as far as these balls go. And I don't want to get too much in it, but take a look at these. And big things are the uh, size of the ball is just a little less than three inches, 2.87 to 2.97. So there's a, a, a little variance in there. There's also a variance on how out of shape they can get, which, man, oh, man, I'll tell you what, I've seen some look pretty ratty. But the weight of the ball is just under a ounce, 0.935 down to 0.78. And we'll see where that kind of comes into play here in a little bit. And the amount of holes are from 26 to 40 circular holes. So it does say they have to be circular. So let's talk about the two different balls. First of all, let's talk about color. They're almost all one color. And to be approved, I'm pretty sure they have to be one color. But they could be anywhere from pink. I've seen black. I've seen this is a pretty standard color, yellow color, all different kinds of colors. And you may want to use those to, you know, some people are colorblind, so they have a uh, problem seeing some of the balls. Or if you're playing on kind of a funky colored court, um, in other words, you wouldn't want to play with a blue ball on the blue court, that type of thing. But with that said, the new Vulcan ball is more of a fluorescent color like this than compared to what the old the Dora ball that they used to use for the last three years or so. This is a Franklin X right here, but the Vulcan ball is more of a color uh, like this, more of a fluorescent one, the new one. Now, um, how how are they made? Let's talk about the two different ways that they're made. There is an injection injection molding, and that is when they take a ball like this. This is an outdoor ball. And they actually take two different halves. So they make two different halves in plastic and then they take and they glue them together. And that's how this ball is made. This ball is made as kind of like a, a rotational way that they make the ball. And they take a mold. It's a, a, a round mold like this. And it comes in two halves. And they take like a powder or a plastic in there. And they put it in the mold. They close the mold up. And then they rotate and heat the mold up. So it starts rotating. And basically what it does is it starts coating the inside of the mold. And when and that's when they heat it up. And then what they do is they keep that rotation going and they cool it down. And as they cool it down, it starts to harden into a ball and then they can pull it apart. Now, how do you tell the difference? Well, on this, you can hear me click it. So this is a Franklin X ball. They can have a little ridge on the outside, but so does this ball. We'll talk about this one in a second. But really what you have to do is you have to look inside. And the balls that are glued together, you'll actually see a ridge inside there. When you look at the inside of these balls, which were rotated when they were made, there is no ridge on the inside. There's just a slight one on the outside. So. That's kind of how you have to um, figure out which way they're made. Now, when you're playing with them, you probably don't care <laughs> in, in reality. But anyway, this is an educational thing. It's the stuff I learned on the way. Now, holes in the balls. Um, the outdoor or the indoor ball has 26 holes. The indoor ball tends to be lighter. Right, the indoor ball tends to be not as hard. In other words, you can kind of flex it a little bit. We're going to see where that comes into play. The outdoor ball tends to be heavier. It has more holes, 40, 40 holes, holes in there. But they both have they both have to be um, smooth surface. Now, here's where this comes into play. I know a lot of people when they say, "Oh, the bigger balls." I mean the bigger balls. <laughs> the bigger holes in the balls are the indoor balls, right? And the smaller ones are because of wind for outdoor. Well, I'm going to call that a myth because that's not really, it has a slight effect, 
But what has more of an effect is the actual weight of the ball. When you weigh these balls in, they're going to come in to the lower limit, you know, in that 22.1 gram to 23 grams or so. When you weigh the uh, outdoor balls, they're actually a heavier ball. In fact, the new um, Vulcan ball, I heard them talking about it during the Masters and saying that it tends to be a heavier bore ball. It's got more of a pop. And I think that was kind of demonstrated by they would seem to be hitting a, uh, quite a few balls long on there, which was uh, kind of cool. Now, I, I will tell you, this is the way you decide as best as I can find out. This is the way you decide whether you're going to use an indoor ball or an outdoor ball. An indoor ball just doesn't mean I'm because I'm using it inside. These balls are designed, the indoor ball, the larger holes, the softer, are meant to you be used on, you know, when you play indoors, oh, there's a lot of like, if you're playing at the Y or something like that, you're going to have a smooth varnished basketball court. And these balls are designed to play on there. They tend, because they're softer and the way they're designed with more holes, they tend to grip more, right? Now, if you're playing indoors on pickleball courts that are designed to be pickleball courts, in other words, they've got grit to them. If you use this ball and you have somebody that knows how to spin the ball, I'm telling you what, this ball is going to hit that gritty surface and it is going to spin and sometimes you can't even get to the ball. I, I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. I played with these up in Philadelphia on an indoor court that wasn't real gritty, but it was sticky. It was designed for uh, volleyball and stuff like that and basketball courts, but it was kind of sticky. So when these balls hit, man, they really, really spun. You'll see these hard balls like this, the outdoor balls. If you play with them on a basketball court, a varnished wood court or a court that's really small, they will come and literally can just skid right along. So that's the big difference between the two if you if you really if you really want to know. Can they be played either way, indoors or outdoors? Sure they can. There's no problem. You will find that these tend to have a little bit more of a pop, and these will be kind of a little bit more thuddy. Um, I guess that's one way to look about look at it. Now, let's take let's um I think that's about it. That's about all we really oh no, let's take a look at this really quick. Let's take a look at the prices of the new um Vulcan ball compared to the Dura Fast ball and the Franklin ball. So these are outdoor balls. Let's check this out. We're gonna take a look at them uh on Amazon. I think this will be kind of fascinating if you take a look at these, if you have no idea what pickleballs cost. First off, let's take a look at the uh, Franklin X ball. And these are all outdoor balls. The Franklin X, so this is per 100, $164 for 100 of them. I heard somebody say that they, they found them even cheaper than that recently. So that's kind of amazing. And if you look at the Dora Fastball, 258 bucks. Now that's, you know, two, two, $2, a little over $2.50 a ball. The new Vulcan ball, if you take a look at that, is the V Pro Flight Outdoor Pickleball, which is sold, sold out, except for I think you can buy a hundred of them, is $410 for a hundred balls. Now, that's $4 a ball. That's playing with a serious ball. And these guys on tour, I think they pretty much change those balls out every single game. Now, what I did here, just out of curiosity why they cost so much, is that for the PPA to use their balls, they actually have to uh, bid on how much they'll pay the PPA to use their balls. And I heard that the for one year, Vulcan actually paid them, this is just a rumor, I don't know it for a fact, but it's 2 to $3 million, somewhere in that price range, to use them for a year. Now, you can imagine how many balls they're going to sell, plus these balls are already sold out, as you can tell. So I, I find that uh, awfully 
it, that's awfully fascinating. Now, the other ball that we kind of didn't talk about is a training ball. Now, you can see this was made in, you know, the mold was in two different pieces. They were put together, and if you look inside, you can see a little bit of a ridge in there. Now, where the heck is my other? I do have another Ernie ball in here, and you can see it much better in there. But I did when I was up, and I bought my Ernie pickleball machine, which we're going to do some video on that once I get it out of the box and get it set up. I'll do an unboxing, and I'll do uh, some software. I'll take a look at the software because I haven't even gotten it out of the box yet, so I'm kind of excited to do that. But I did have a chance to talk to Dave about why they designed these balls for pretty much specifically, although I, I've hit them around, and I would say it's a, a, a tweener. I call it a tweener ball. In other words, it's not like the super high end. It's not it doesn't cost that much money, uh, four bucks a ball, that's for sure. And they feel just a little different, but for a training ball, um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll let him explain it, but I, I thought it was pretty good, so much so that I ended up buying 150 of them to put in my Ernie machine, and I bought 50 of these, and he'll explain why he used them. Anyway, here's Dave, and this was my interview up at, they call it the Roost up there, where they have all their equipment and stuff like that. And really fascinating guy. If you haven't watched the other video, which is a review uh, with him about the Ernie machine, um, and and his his dedication to that was part of the reason that I bought one. Plus, that's a pretty darn good machine. And like I said, if you're interested in that, uh, watch that video. But anyway, here's Dave talking about the Ernie pickleballs. Hey everybody, how you doing? I am back up here at the Roost with Dave. At this point, you probably already watched the first video, the interview with him, but. He uh, invited me up here to play, and I had an absolute blast. as a bunch of great friends that we played some really good pickleball with. And uh, we started talking about the balls. And uh, when I got, got my Ernie, I did get a bunch of balls. And I asked him, I said, you know, why, why don't you talk about uh, the balls a little bit? Because they are a little different, and you put some work into it. And, and yep. he, I'm sure people have some questions about it. We have two different pickleballs that we spent about about nine months formulating. They're a slightly different kind of plastic than you would get in traditional sort of traditional balls. I won't name names. Uh, there are really four things that make these balls different. In this case, five things, which one of them is obvious. This is a two-color ball, or we call a training ball. And it's used really to like, help the player identify spin coming at them and then spin when it leaves their paddle. And the other thing it tends to help with is the ability to track the ball to your paddle. And if you're a beginner or a lower intermediate, that tends to be a problem. This ball forces you, not forces you, but it makes you more aware. And so you tend to follow it better into the paddle. So it's a good ball for beginners, uh, lower intermediates. Uh, the other factor that both these balls have is they are sound dampening. So they are about 66% of the sound a hard plastic ball would make um, that pop off the paddle. So these are really formulated, the idea all along was to go after the home court market where they have to be concerned about sound. So these are sound dampening, both uh, are sound dampening pickleballs. Uh, the other thing is they last at least 10 times longer than any hard plastic pickleball, whether you're playing outdoors in the cold or indoors on a standard court, but it's a little warmer, these balls will outlast the others by a factor of 10 at least. Uh, we're, we have a really hard time breaking them. They can be broken, but you got to be Charles Atlas to break these things. They're really difficult to break. Um, the last thing is, and if any of you have had a ball machine, you know about this. Uh, the harder plastic balls tend to leave a residue on the throwing wheels. That residue accumulates over time and can create some inconsistencies in the throw. The Ernie balls don't leave residue. They are a different plastic, so they don't leave the residue the way the harder plastic balls do. And not only that, if you use hard plastic balls and you accumulate some residue on your wheels, I don't care what the ball machine is, you can use the Ernie balls, and over time, they will remove that residue from the wheels. So they actually clean the wheels. Now, we don't market them as wheel cleaning pickleballs, but they will absolutely remove the harder ABS plastic or polyethylene from the wheels over time. Um, so yeah, that's it. We love the balls. 
We use them. We use, but we use every kind of ball there is because we have to. We have to test them all. And I like to test them not only in the machine, but I also like to play uh, with the various balls. So uh, anyway, that's summary. That's the Ernie Pickleballs. You talked about that you can use actually any wheel in, in, in there, but some people have found that they use other balls and they kind of put some residue on there. Is there, uh, do you have any suggestions as far as cleaning the wheels or what to do with that when, when that right. happens? So if you do use the other harder balls and they deposit a residue on the wheels, and again, this is true for any pickleball machine, it's not really unique to Ernie, is one of the methods, sort of tried and true methods to clean the wheels is to put duct tape around the wheel and then pull it off as if you were having a hair removal process done. So pull it off fast. The, the thing with doing that is you have to do it sort of every few days. Like you can't let the plastic build up too much on the wheels, otherwise the duct tape won't work. So it's really kind of, you know, maybe after every tri every session or every two sessions, take some duct tape. It only takes a minute. Wrap it around the wheel. Get it on the real. Get it on the wheel real nice and tight, and then pull it off quickly. But but in theory, with with these with the, the Ernie balls, then this should be almost non-existent. Or... That's correct. The Ernie balls will not deposit the residue uh, the way the other harder plastic balls do. So if you have the Ernie balls, chances are you're not going to have to worry about your wheels at all. Uh, these she'll, she will be fine relative to depositing residue on the wheel. I got one more question that I've seen asked, and yeah. that is that there's a little chain that hangs out of the bottom oh, yeah. of, of Ernie. Yeah. And I know some people have a question about that, and we're going to get that one answered right now. So the chain that sticks out the bottom, bottom and sort of rubs along the ground is what's called a grounding chain. Uh, if you're out on the court and there's a thunderstorm, thunder and lightning storm, and Ernie gets hit, It'll drive all the electricity down into the ground via that chain. The chances of that happening are pretty much slim and none because you shouldn't be out on the court with Ernie during a thunder and lightning storm. Uh, but if you are, for whatever reason, that lightning chain will save Ernie from death and destruction of a lightning hit. Yeah. You, you got to save Ernie. The heck with you. That's right. You got to save Ernie. That's right. Go, go sit your butt down in Ernie. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Anyway, that was great. Uh, thanks a lot, Dave. That's that's really cool. I hope people uh, understand that. I know when I got my my Ernie, I did get, um, I, I got the the balls, 150 balls to put in there, yep. and I got a few of the uh, multicolor balls. So yep, uh, just to fire out once in a while. Anything else? No, that's it. Uh, try the Ernie balls. You can buy them in packs of 50. Uh, we give substantial discounts to get 150 balls. The idea was to make filling Ernie's hopper, which is 150 balls, a lot less expensive than you otherwise could do it with sort of traditional high-end or high, highly expensive uh, pickleballs. So give them a try. I had a great time playing uh, pickleball. Hopefully next time I get out here, uh, I'll be able to do this again up in up in the in the great white north as, as yeah, yeah. compared to Florida. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. That's it. And like I usually say, I'll either see you back here on YouTube or I will see you down in the villages. Have a great day. Thanks a lot for joining me. And that was a lot of fun doing the research on the pickleballs. I, I didn't know all, all that about pickleballs. I hope you learned a little bit. Remember, these are going to be videos for, um, you know, 4.0 and under, maybe 4.5 and under. But I'll also be doing some traveling videos. So I'll show you some places that I go to. Like in a few weeks from now, I'll be going down to Pictona down in Daytona Beach. That's going to be a lot of fun meeting a ton of people down there on a kind of like a group thing. I know there's 200 and some people going down there and they're all just going down to socialize and play pickleball. So I'll do more videos on those. Also, I really hope to get some coaches to join me on some of these and kind of help me because getting a pickleball machine was great. And I think this is really one one of the best pickleball machines out there, if not the best. You use the discount code, please, if you do, it kind of helps me out a little bit. It doesn't cost you any more. But, um, you know, I, I, I paid for that myself, so I'll be giving you an honest review on that. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping it'll help. But anyway, I will try to videotape the uh, coaching sessions. And as I learn things playing pickleball, I'll do little videos on those on pickleball moment here. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for subscribing and liking. Uh, I really have a fun, fun time passing on information that I find out. Anyway, join me down here in the villages or back on here on YouTube. Thanks a lot and have fun playing pickleball, that's for sure. It is a great social sport and I absolutely love it.